morning everybody on this very cold morning we have minus six here which is I think yeah, 20s in Fahrenheit very cold and I hope your morning is much better than my morning although we'll talk about that uh, lots of games yesterday actually quite some stuff happening uh, and for once I decided to not go with the conference because there were at average lots really two games that stood out for me and I followed those first one I followed mostly the second half uh, the fun part fun part was that I wanted to get the kids to bed so I already said the first half ah, let's not bother too much with it uh, I saw the biggest scene of the first half that was of course that between against um, the Rangers and then the second half starts just turned the light off and I have the phone I put the game on and I'm just more or less listening and I'll tell you uh, I got everything watched the highlights this morning I, I, I tell a little, a little bit about the game in a sec but I was listening and, uh, and around the 60th minute the kids are seemingly asleep I'm getting up and the little one pulls me back in although she was sleeping and this continued two more times every time she was snoring which is usually just uh, absolutely safe sign that she's asleep um, and I'm you know the after the second time um, I just decided okay let's get in a comfortable position that I may I maybe I'm moving out that she feels it's way too much uh, and I said I'm I was basically lying on my belly next to her she totally gone and I'm watching the game right there so from the 65th on us or so I saw everything I was just in the room with my daughter sleeping next to me and I tried to get up around the 75th again no she pulls me back in and I think it was 88th when I when my wife or a text that they text me are they still not yet asleep and I'm like, they are asleep she's just Whenever I get up, she keeps getting to me, but I thought, yeah, now I have a chance. Going down, watching the last five minutes, and she comes down. But she was determined to not be alone or to not let me go to my wife and we have a nice evening. We had a nice evening because she was actually very, very nice afterwards. So uh, very, very sweet, but you know, she should have slept, but she was even good spirits this morning. So I cannot, I don't know what happened, how it happened. It's just one of those where you feel as a parent a little bit as a failure because you did not accomplish what you set out to do. And uh, by all accounts, she was gone. Maybe not. Anyway, so the game was, as I said, Rapid Vienna against uh, Rangers. And it was clear from the beginning the situation Rangers needed to win, Rapid needed just a draw, and they would advance. Um, and of course, Rangers took a little bit more the initiative. The pitch, yeah, I look, I look at it because I, as, as I mentioned yes, yesterday, uh, Rapid was complaining about how bad the pitch is. Um, it really didn't look well. It really did, didn't look well and I, I, I don't know if it was an advantage or disadvantage uh, for whoever but it was really not nice to play. Rangers had one huge chance after I think it was a corner kick, uh, a header onto the bar, uh, which was basically the oh, one real chance in the first half. Everything else, it was kind of uh, hardly no shots. Um, Rapid actually mostly controlling the game quite well, um, and Rangers not doing much. Second half, though, uh, Rangers they needed the win and they really ticked it up a notch. Um, and by the way, there were reports about 12,000 Rangers fans in Vienna. Although only about 3,000 at most had tickets, uh, some of which were already for uh, the repeat section, which they tried to avoid as best as they could to not have that. So, yeah, uh, I have not heard about any incidents. Uh, frankly, I didn't check. I was more busy with the Europa League results. Uh, 
Rangers is probably one of those teams where I never know. I know they travel well and they are usually a great crowd. Uh, but I also have heard that they cause some uh, trouble here, here and there. So I don't know what was happening. And you know, Rapid fans are not, the, as I can tell from my own experience, are not the most forthcoming. Uh, if they are in a pack, uh, I mean, I have uh, friends, colleagues, and some that are Rapid fans. Some of them I don't understand, but some, yeah, if you're from Vienna, I get it. Uh, they are nice, and you know, most of them are okay, but they're, uh, they're just a, a hardcore section, uh, one of the worst, some of the worst ultra groups in Austria. Uh, very well internationally matched with other nefarious groups, so yeah, uh, that's where the concern is coming from. And the Rapid is known to be fan-friendly, but to, to the point where the fans actually uh, control all of the time. Back to the game. Uh, Rangers was pushing forward, but I honestly have to, have, have to say, during the game, while I was listening and watching, I never had the feeling that there were huge changes and they were about to break. Uh, Rapid stood surprisingly well to me, especially what I've seen from them in the Austrian League. They actually had quite good control. Uh, Rangers had some half chances. I think, I mean, there were a few where, yeah, uh, the goal is saved and then the rebound needed to be pulled all the way. I know there was one chance where the own defender, I think Vardac, uh, touched the ball with the head and the goalie was quick to take it. But uh, really, it seemed like it looked safe, but you know, the, uh, deceivingly safe. Rangers was pushing forward, but then uh, the Rangers goalie, I think, uh, he kicked the ball from the net and it uh, from his own end and got to Berisha and with a wonderful pass. I mean, uh, how he made that goal kick uh, to that point uh, to not get to uh, his own, own a, little bit, a little bit beyond me. We'll talk about Scottish goalkeepers because Celtic didn't do much better. Uh, he's a little bit beyond me. The passing move that was really nicely done by Rapid and uh, Ljubicic makes the 1-0 and that seals the deal for Rapid. Honestly, they have a negative goal differential thanks to a 5-0 hammering at the hands of uh, Villarreal and they only won the duel against Spartak Moscow. Uh, the others against Rangers and Villarreal, they would, would have lost uh, if it was direct, uh, but you know. They got the necessary points, especially one point against Villarreal. They got two wins against Spartak. So, um, I guess they deserve to move on. I didn't... I, I was a little a little bit surprised about it, to be honest. Uh, especially after they lost 5-0 to Villarreal. They could have actually won against Villarreal at home. So, you know, uh, they played much better in the Europa League than um, in the Austrian League. Maybe this is a sad quality of the Austrian league. I am, you know, the default for Austrians is that there's, uh, there's not much quality in, in, in the league, with the exception of Salzburg, maybe. More on them later. The other game, uh, Villarreal beats Spartak 2 0, so Villarreal finishes top of the group 10, 10 points, Rapid also 10 points, Rangers has 6 points, and Spartak has 5 points. Uh, was an open group, but in, in, in the end, uh, it ended the way it had to end. Like it, it already stood after game day five because all the whole teams took care of business. The other game that I watched, I was quickly considering a conference call, but when they started showing so much of Bayer Leverkusen beating up on Larnaca, I said, no, nah, screw it, I want to see Milan. <sighs> I was a little bit nervous about that game, but you know, first half seemed quite safe. And in second half, I don't know what got into Milan. They just, I mean, the comment that said Milan is playing with the fire and horrible defending on the corner kick, 1 0 Olympiakos. Uh, seven minutes later, and you know, there were already some chances, but it was always that the, whenever I, th I saw the Olympiakos had, had a big chance, Milan actually also went forward and tried to do something. And I still love those red pants. Uh, then shot. Or whatever, deflected by Zapata over the goal in 2 0, and that's exactly the result that Olympiakos needed to advance. Um, 
now they have the advantage. So 67th or 68th, it was 2-0. Uh, fortunately, Zapata made gold, gold on his hit. He hit Milan like Milan in the 72nd. Got the goal that they needed. Uh, but now uh, Olympiak was still one goal away from the mirror team. And they get it with a very, very soft penalty. I don't know what the ref saw there. Uh, yes, about there was on the player, but giving a penalty in that situation I thought was ridiculous. Fortunatis, of course, makes it 2 makes it 3 1. Egoin threatens to uh, make a goal. Reina was in front. I actually thought that Reina, yes, you saw that he's the backup goalie. They couldn't get the goal, Olympiakos actually deservedly makes it to the next round because if you look at every, every result, May Milan performed a little bit better against Betis than Olympiakos did. Um, but they scored more goals against Dudelage and uh, Direct Duel ended 3 1 1 3. Um, maybe the first game was more in Milan's hand, but the second game, what Milan was playing, yes not playing with the first string squad and I'm actually quite nervous about the Serie A that, uh, that there's not much happening. Uh, it's embarrassing and you know, didn't I tell you on um, Wednesday morning I was a little bit giddy first about Inter advancing and now yeah, that's what you get. Uh, Milan is now out. Of course, I'm a class half full guy, and similar to Pauk, who I think in that group, I can tell you, Vidi got the draw in Chelsea, that they needed to stay ahead of Pauk, but of course, Bata beats Pauk 3 1 and advances to the next round. Um, therefore, Pauk, I talk, seemingly wants to go for the Greek Championship. Therefore, not full focus on the Europa League, and I think for Milan, I can see something similar. And I, you know, when I was saying about Liverpool uh, not advancing a Champions League, I actually thought about this now with uh, Milan. And the more I think about it, the happier I am. Milan can now play in the league, and actually, they don't have to play Thursdays any anymore. They can actually play now. Saturday, Friday games or Sunday normal games, so you know, a little bit of pressure on Lazio. Uh, so I think there is a silver lining, and I really, 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 really hope that Milan now takes this as a sign. Focus on the free um, Serie A, get that fourth Champions League spot. That's all you need, needed to do. Was it embarrassing yesterday? Yes, it was, because still the squad that they featured, I don't like the defense, but there were still many good pieces. Uh, out there that should have made more and I, I don't know for instance what happened to Castillejo who I liked a lot at the beginning of the season now he's a little bit tailing off it's yeah, a little bit little bit frustrating uh, still keeping my hopes keep, keep my, Olympiacos is not a bad team uh, that's at least what I keep telling myself. Uh, the other game, Dudelange gets a point at Betis, 0-0. Uh, so it finishes Betis 12, Olympiacos 10, plus 5 goal differential, Milan 10, plus 3 goal differential, that's the difference, and Dudelange 1. And yeah, Milan was a goal away, because if it was 3-2, even if it was 4-2, it would have been uh, in favor of Milan. But okay. Other games, uh, early games of note. Ah, and let me say before I go to the other games, that loss to Milan kept off a horrible week for Italy. I think Italy, uh, Inter were, it was the only team that uh, did not lose and they got a draw and were eliminated. So this was a big disappointment. All Italian teams lost. And just at a point where I thought, oh, Italy is getting better again. They have an absolute horror week. Now you have Napoli and Inter in the uh, Europa League. Lazio, they lost at home to Frankfurt despite being up 1-0. Uh, I think Correa made the goal and then uh, turned, turned around. Uh, they already had their spot secured. So if you didn't have your spot secured, you were basically eliminated or relegated to the next stage. Horrible weekend for Italy. Absolutely. And that hurts me personally. 
uh, a lot because you know uh, Serie A and Italy are my favorites. So uh, that group Frankfurt, uh, uh, OM losing to Limassol 3-1 at home. OM is probably the biggest disappointment in the Europa League this year, uh, getting at just a measly point. Uh, I think it was a way to Limassol. Uh, Frankfurt wins all their games, 18. There's only one more team that we'll talk about there shortly. Lazio 9 points. Nothing to talk about. Home for Limassol 7 and Marseille 1. And that adds that. Actually, in the beginning, I thought this will be a great group. It was actually quite disappointing. Uh, of the early games, Besiktas Malmö uh, was an interesting game because Besiktas actually needed just a draw. And in the first half, I think they hit the bar once, and Malmö tried to control the game a little, a little bit more. It's so crazy that Besiktas cannot get more going. Uh, and after a great pass from Rosenberg, uh, Antonsson scores the 1-0 for Malmö and they hold on to it. I mean, uh, there were two big chances for Besiktas, uh, one that actually hit the bar in 94th. Malmö hangs on and gets the spot. Again, Besiktas was almost eliminated by Lask. Still hurts, because I think Lask maybe could have done something there. Henk wins 4-0 against Salzburg, so that, miracle, that uh, glory run ends as well. Henk 11, Malmö 9, gets ahead of Besiktas with 7, and Salzburg has 5 points. Um, Ren against Astana was the other final, I couldn't see any highlights, Ren won 2-0, and gets the spot that Astana couldn't. And therefore we have um, Kiev losing at home to Jablonec, they were already secured their spot in the next round. So Kiev 11, and I wonder if Kiev also played at, at, in the home stadium, I would imagine, and then you had two games in a row in the Olympiski Stadium in Kiev. Well, it's, it's a great stadium, but you know, still, usually don't do that. So Kiev 11, Ren 9, Astana 8, Jablonets 5. I was happy to, that Ren make, made it. And the other, the last one, um, that, was early was the Sevilla group where Sevilla beat Krasnodar 3 0. Uh, and Liege cannot get the win against Akisaspor. In any case, it would not have been much because, uh, enough because um, uh, if they would have won, then it all would have been at six, uh, all would have been at 12 points Sevilla and Krasnodar. And if it would have stand as it is, there was just one goal too little from. Sevilla, if they would have beaten the Gras under 4-0, uh, that would have uh, done it for... No, would not have done it, then it would have been a draw or a fair play uh, between uh, Liege and Gras uh, But, you know, they couldn't get it done and you know, they were a little bit on the wrong side. So, Sevilla and Gras at once. Um, the other one, of course, that I was a little bit watching uh, the results were Celtic against Salzburg. Well, Salzburg was already qualified, Celtic just need, needed a point. However, they really didn't show up. Salzburg's pressing uh, poison for uh, Celtic, who really couldn't get anything going. Uh, Salzburg gets a 1 0, and then Celtic goalkeeper, similar to Karius in the Champions League final. He wants to pass and pass it right to Goldbrunson, who has has an and, and, and with that makes it two 0 for Salzburg, where basically seals the win. At that point, Leipzig was up a one 0 They had many many chances at the beginning. They finally made the goal. I think they even hit the post. And then Rosenberg at the end gets the equalizer, and the game ended before that. So Celtic actually gets the. Uh, final spot and it was funny because everyone in the stands at Celtic was watching the phones seeing how was the game going um, in Leipzig and it ended 1-1. Uh, Celtic even got a penalty that was saved but uh, the rebound converted so it was only 1-2. Everyone celebrating. Uh, I think the Celtic players were humiliated, felt humiliated by Salzburg who wins for the third time all games in the group stage. Uh, that's a big achievement, I gotta say, for an Austrian team. And as much as I don't like uh, Salzburg, especially with their, you know, 
Red Bull being behind him. I respect the hell of a lot of what they have done over the past, uh, I don't say six, seven years. They really are doing a great job. And Salzburg is a true force in the Europa League. That's their competition. Uh, you gotta see. Other results, uh, Bayer Leverkusen beating up Lernaka, 5-1 Rasgrad and Zurich 1-1, one, one. so Rasgrad, I mean it was only between 3rd and 4th, but they finished last, and between 1st and 2nd Leverkusen 13, Zurich 10, Larnaca 5 and Rasgrad 4, um, a slightly surprising result, Turnova beating Fenerbahce 1-0, Dinamo and Anderlecht playing 0-0, it was always the kind of boring group. Zagreb wins that one with 14. Fenerbahce moves on, kind of saves uh, Turkish honor, eight points. Uh, turn number seven and Anderlecht uh, three. But that was already kind of decided. This is what? Nice. Uh, then there are two more groups. Uh, group C, Copenhagen losing at home to Bordeaux. Although it was not meant to be because Slavia beat Zenit at home 2-0. And therefore, Zenit 11, Slavia 10, Porto 7, Copenhagen 5. And then Sporting 3 0 against Worskla. Arsenal beats uh, Karabakh 1 0. And we already knew that it's Arsenal Sporting. Worskla stays ahead of Karabakh. That was the Europa League. Um, yes, I'm still wearing my Milan jacket because that's my only winter jacket that I have. Still a fan, as I said, silver lining. Champions League. Uh, I'm happy for what the Austrian teams did. Uh, that's that, that I can say I'm happy that Leipzig got eliminated uh, because they were supposed to be the bigger team than Salzburg so uh, ha happy about that but yeah it was a little bit yeah it, it Italians didn't do well Park didn't get the spot but you always gotta look where is the league more important? I think the one that made me most happy is Ren advancing. And you know that I was not dancing. No, I think Rapid advancing was making me happier than that. Uh, but you know, all not really dancing on the streets stuff. Uh, I would not have done it for 8 million advanced too, because they would have escaped by the scruff of the neck. Um, and I think the best news is that Leipzig is out. Cannot say more than that. Okay. Let me know game, which games you watched, whether you agree with my assessment of the games that I watched when you saw those and you know where I quickly made a summary. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I'm afraid I won't be able to get a top 10 video out this week. Maybe. Well, uh, unlikely, unless I make something quick and that's usually not good. Um, there will be posts on shirts. I think uh, Norway is on, Romania will come soon. And I will try to write about one or two jurors is more so that I can keep you updated, but maybe not with videos. Uh, so that's that for me. Hope you enjoyed that. And I'll, the latest, we'll see a video Monday morning about what went on in the league. I'm going to a game with my family on Saturday, Lusk. So looking forward to that one. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Bye.